Voilà. Live on Facebook, I'm recording here on Zoom. This is Ali from Fourth Generation for Education. For the people, they've been watching us since the morning. This is session number five, and we still have two sessions. Our thematic day is uh, Learn and Lead, and we would like now to discuss about the ATLs and how the ATLs, they can be the foundation for a healthy learning communities. So for all the people who are watching, remember, all panelists and attendees to send your uh, chat and reflection Q&A for your question. I'm keeping an eye also on Facebook messages and uh, let's give it a start. Thanks, Ali. Hi, everybody. I hope you guys are doing well. I'm just going to advance to that first slide. Hopefully you are all seeing what I'm seeing, which is a lovely picture of me and my colleague, Anna. And um, so I'm just going to introduce myself first. My name is Wayne Quenville, born in Canada, but I've been abroad uh, since 2003, teaching uh, six different countries, uh, all 18 years in IB education, uh, PYP lead educator now, and have been working with the IBIN doing school visits and workshops for the last nine years. Uh, hopefully you guys will check me out on Twitter and uh, we can connect because today is all about learning and sharing learning. And I look forward to learning from all of you. And if you have any follow up questions, you can always use my email address and then I'll hand over to my lovely colleague, Anna. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm so excited and grateful to be here. Um, like Wayne mentioned, my name is Anna Stoika and we work together at Antwerp International School in Belgium. Uh, I'm an early years teacher and one of the areas I'm so very passionate about is this area of emotions and how they can impact relationships we build with others. I'm also a practitioner trainer with the Emotion Coach in UK, uh, which means I kind of train teachers in schools and work with families to kind of develop this understanding of the principles of emotion coaching and how to put this into practice uh, in interactions with children. I'm really excited to be here and have this opportunity to connect with everyone from all around the world and to share our thinking and learn from one another. Yeah, and it's really important, again, to just say thanks to Ali for setting up this amazing platform, this day of leadership, this wonderful talk, Ali. We really appreciate you, man. Um, you. So I'm not sure if either of you have, or Ali, if you have that Padlet link. Uh, we need to share it in the chat. Yeah, do you have that already, or shall I? No, if you can put it for us, or maybe Anna. Anna, do you have that? Just out. It? handling the tech stuff yeah i can give it thanks a go. anna so just looking at some guiding questions to kind of lead this session help us focus our, our chat and our conversation and i think it's important for us all to recognize you know we're we're all learners in this atl um project that the ib has developed for us you know that this lance king has uh written with the ib it's uh just such a wonderful list of um skills and uh, really, we've put together a palette of some of the resources that we use to help us as learners, uh, help us as educators, and we wanted to share with you and sort of grow that palette with you. Um, these are some of the things we're using in our day to day and some things that you know we're looking to explore further. Um, as Anna was talking about today, we're, we're gonna first talk about a healthy learning community and how emotions are an integral part of that. Um, and that we're gonna, lean a little bit more onto some of the other ATLs, but then we're really going to come back to those sort of effective focusing on self management, um, the communication, the collaboration, just being self aware uh, and how important they are to um, really getting us going into uh, a healthy learning community. So I'm going to jump ahead to the next slide and but let's stop here and pause already and just kind of use the chat function to get us thinking about what what is a healthy learning community. How do you define it in your school, in your community? Good. So first interaction, how do you define a healthy uh, community? And then you also have the Padlet link in the chat uh, where we have plenty of resources for you uh, regarding ATLs. So how do we define a healthy community. And my first interaction is from Noor, where she says, uh, when students, they have voice and agency. Absolutely. Yeah. It's such, such an integral part, integral part. And, you know, and teachers as well, you know, uh, I know there's a session later on talking about 
teachers are leaders and that's something that we align with very much at Antwerp International School and Anna and I, you know, that uh, really everybody is a leader. Hence why, you okay. know, Anna and I in our different roles, we're both leading this. What's next, Ali? What's next? Open and acceptance, collaboration as space uh, for making mistakes and reflections. So, Absolutely. Absolutely. So important. These are some of the keywords that we got from the chat, an environment where we use feedback uh, to feed forward. It's a place where we have uh, support uh, we are all respected. All the stakeholders speak the same language. So we have a common language and let me say hello to Samira. Uh, teachers <laughs> are empowered. Uh, we have uh, trust uh, among the teacher and the student and the parents. We have an open uh, communication. We accept diversity, uh, different languages and beliefs, diversity of ideas. So these are some of the uh, key words to define a healthy environment. Wow, amazing. Do you want so, more? <laughs> yeah, it sounds, it sounds like we're done, Anna. Everybody's, everybody's aware, you know, you've got the common language of the ATLs, we've got the IB continuum. Let's, uh, let's wrap this up, shall we? <laughs> no, I'm sure uh, people, they would like to see how do you define it and what are you doing these days? <laughs> yeah, actually, definitely. And again, it's, it's so unique leading a webinar like this. I would love to see all the faces. I'm used to those face-to-face -face workshops. You know, it's, uh, it's something that... I'm still getting used to living in this box, as I like to call it. <laughs> Anyways, we've thrown up a couple of quotes here from the IB, uh, the principal to practice the online uh, support material. And of course, shout out to Chris Gadbury and his amazing graphics. I uh, had to use this one when I was putting in the approaches to learning. Uh, I really love his work. Anyways, it's that first one that uh, really jumped out and really is going to be a platform for us today was that connecting ATLs to a healthy learning community. It's that idea of we're all learning the ATLs, that it's something that goes on for life, especially with those effective skills. You know, they, they are things that mastery comes and goes, you know, different points in our lives where COVID, for example, is a great challenge where perseverance, stress management, all of those things had to, we, we had to, you know, really fine tune and, and work to uh, ensure that our communities are staying together, you know, and working together and that collaboration is key. Um, and of course, we've got another statement down here that I'm going to kind of flip. It refers to a lot about the students, the students as learners, but really we want teachers. We want all adults in our learning community, you know, the governing board. We want um, people in roles of leadership, people who are teacher leaders to really sort of feel that they themselves are using these skills and that it's that common language. Um, and really what began as trans skills for us who are in the PYP. And that's one thing I should mention that Anna and I are very much going to be speaking today from a primary years perspective, but it extends to the MYP and DP because of this, this spine for our curriculums. You know, it really allows us to dive into different subject areas. It allows a lot of interconnection because of the ATLs. They are that spine. And so what began as the trans skills is now that ATL continuum IB for the four programs. And now the next slide is going to help us narrow down, you know, within the ATLs for our talk today, because we could spend hours talking about all five of these areas. And again, if you're interested in learning more and connecting, we uh, are starting or have started the Lala Tap Meetup with a lovely lady named Bianca Dusep, who's in the call already. And I know she's partnering up with Ali. So our French colleagues can have those same sort of collaboration building sessions in French. And again, I just a shout out for that. It's on the Padlet. I hope you guys will check that out. So, is this a familiar pyramid for all of us? I think so, yeah. Maslow's hierarchy. I think we've all explored that back in the day. Well, this is, this is something that, um, again, we thought was really important to bring up. It allowed us to connect the ATLs to a healthy learning community. This is something at Antwerp International School that um, is really important to us. Um, for example, we've just redeveloped our vision statement as a school. It now reads as holistic education leads to self-determination. And again, where do we want everybody to be in that community, in our community, hopefully in your communities as well, is self-determined, you know, self-actualizing, taking on that leadership role, feeling empowered to do that. 
And as Anna was alluding to earlier, where does it all start? With that security, with that sense of community, with that belonging. You know, uh, do the governing board, do they do they feel part of the community? Are they coming in? You know, our board of trustees, they're, they're in all the time, walking in on campus pre-COVID, of course. Now it's a, a little challenging for us here in Belgium. But again, that it's that sort of community that we're really working hard to develop. This uh, particular slide I put up because of that one other top, it says on average, less than 15% reach this level. Now I, I'm wondering where that statistic came from. I know it's not from our school. I know we have a, a, a much higher percentage, but it's probably not 100% in any school. You know, there's always people that we can reach out and support. And that's some of the things that we're gonna talk about today. So, just wanna make sure I've covered everything. Anna, have I covered everything? Uh, I believe so. Science. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to hand over to Anna now, just so we can talk a little bit about the science behind that, behind that emotion. Thank you, Wayne. Now, when we, um, we wonder, why is it so fundamental for us to develop these effective skills, to be self aware, to be aware of our own and others emotions, to be aware of the connections between the body and the mind, well, it all comes down to what it means to be human, um, because we were all born with two very powerful needs, that of connection and that of acceptance, or this idea that Wayne talked about, acceptance and belonging. Because we are innately social animals, acceptance and belonging are core needs. Therefore, we must, we must take care of people's sense of belonging. Because when we lived in a tribe, we couldn't survive unless we were connected. Uh, we were born knowing that we would survive if we were connected to a group. So in a tribe, you couldn't hunt for food on your own. You couldn't build a home on your own. Um, you couldn't do any of those things unless you were connected to a group. And in addition, as human beings, our prime motivation is to feel safe. So what is safety? Safety are the cues of trust in the environment. Whether or not you feel safe enough to give up your own control to another person. So just imagine an experiment where you are asked to close your eyes and drop backwards, trusting that someone will be there to catch you. That is trust. That is safety. That is feeling safe. Yeah, and now we're certainly not uh, doing many uh hand-to-hand -hand catching experiences right now due to COVID, but definitely, you know, having those community building events, you know, at, at Antwerp International School, for example, professional learning communities, we have our PLC groups, which are a key foundation for building connections across the three programs. And they're deeply embedded these last few years in learning about the ATLs, working with the ATLs, it's become a, a community goal. And so, you know, having those events that build the community make people safe, driven by the needs of the wider community and allow us, you know, to all be leaders. So, emotions. Yeah, thank you, Wayne. Love those pictures. I love those pictures, Anna. Yes, I, I do too. Uh, we're just gonna take a little bit of a look at human emotions now. Uh, now, Dr. Paul Ekman is a psychologist and a professor emeritus at the University of California. And he is the pioneer in the study of human emotions. And now he theorized that there are certain basic emotions that are universal to all humans, regardless of your background, of your culture. And they are distress, anger, fear, surprise, disgust, and joy. And Ekman was, by the way, the key consultant on the Pixar movie Inside Out that I'm sure you may be familiar with. And he advised on the characters that lived inside the protagonist Riley's head. Now, Ekman's theory states that these emotions are inbuilt in us because they were key to our survival as a species. Therefore, understanding that all emotions are necessary and a natural part of being a human being is an important part of authentically connecting to ourselves and to others. We must begin to understand that there are no negative or positive emotions and that they are just that, emotions, a natural part of what it means to be human. The thing is that all of us are triggered by one or some of these emotions, and that is because of the experiences we have had as children. 
by the way we were raised by our parents and how our caregivers responded to certain emotions in us. So as human beings, we all carry different baggage and different preconceived ideas about certain emotions, about the display of emotions, about what is acceptable, what is not acceptable. And this absolutely impacts how we respond to moments of emotions, to tension and stress in others in our colleagues, in the members of our learning community. So the way we handle others when they are going through difficult times is very much dictated by our own experiences. So in order to be able to comfortably sit with all emotions, there is this need to understand that all emotions are natural and also to begin to reflect on how comfortable or uncomfortable we ourselves are with various uh, emotions in ourselves and in others. Yeah, and so the way we're currently tying all that together in the PYP is uh, there's, and there's many wonderful programs out there, but for example, the zones of regulation. So it allows teachers and students to have a common language to talk about those emotions and those feelings when they're challenging. And so, you know, it's just about providing that, that calm platform for people to deal with their emotions and to, to really learn from one another. And again, it connects with the next point that uh, Anna's gonna talk about, which is neuroplasticity. Thank you, Wayne. Well, some of you may have heard of the term neuroplasticity. Um, this is one of my um, favorite things to kind of talk about. Uh, what we're learning from modern neuroscience is that from the time the brain begins to develop in utero until the day we die, the connections among the cells in our brains reorganize as a result of our interactions with our environment. So the human brain is shaped by experiences and every experience changes the brain structure and functioning. So neuroplasticity is really encouraging knowing that our brains are plastic, meaning that even as adults, our brains, even if they get damaged, let's say as a result of a traumatic experience, we can rebuild them. In other words, we can create more neural networks and pathways. Now, this is how a stroke patient, for example, can learn how to uh, talk again. Um, so knowing that our brains can be continually shaped, that we can restructure and rewire our brains through experiences, through relationships, through emotions that we feel and the opportunities we have to practice certain things, I think is quite fascinating. Would you agree, Wayne? Yeah, and really bringing it into a school context, you know, it's it's talking about Carol Dweck's uh, research, which is that growth mindset, you know, which is deeply embedded in the ATLs. And um, again, at our school, we really utilize our PLCs, uh, which run across the full year and are really a chance for teachers to continually reflect and continually rebuild and practice those ATLs. So there's that common language, the PLC community, there's that engagement, and it's it's just chance for teachers to learn about passing on growth mindset, practicing growth mindset, you know, and, and accepting uh, limitations on themselves. And again, it's the modeling from a leadership down to, you know, all avenues, all aspects of the learning community. And again, it, that kind of connects to where we're going next, which is talking about some neuro neurons, a little bit more science, which is why I'm so happy that Anna's here to help me understand it all. <laughs> yeah, this is super, super exciting too. Um, Another slightly controversial aspect of more recent brain science is this idea of mirror neurons. So a mirror neuron is a neuron that fires both when an animal acts and when the animal observes the same action performed by another. Therefore, the neuron mirrors the behavior, behavior of the other as though the observer uh, himself were acting. Now, scientists have noticed that, and at least in animals, that's why this is still a bit controversial amongst researchers, because they have not yet been able to completely replicate the same effects in a human study yet. But the theory goes that it is very likely that this is something that happens um, in us as well. So I'm gonna tell you a little story. Um, in the 1990s, a group of neuropsychologists placed electrodes in the ventral premotor cortex of the makaki monkey to study neurons specialized for the control of hand and mouth actions. So they recorded electrical signals from a group of neurons in the monkey's brain while the monkey was reaching for pieces of food. So the researchers could measure their response to certain movements. 
they found that the same neurons they recorded would also fire when the monkey was just observing the action of another picking up a piece of food. So the implications of this, we talk about this in teaching all the time, right? We have to model, we have to model what we want the learner to learn. It is the same with all interactions. If we demonstrate, for example, the act of calming down, the act of finding different kinds of strategies to socially engage with someone after a difficult moment, others learn to regulate by watching us. So the neural pathway set in your brain for the act of calming down is mirrored in the other's brain. That's kind of the theory here. And I'm sure it's been replicated in humans because in our staff room, I've seen many people eat cookies and I've immediately wanted a cookie. I, I know I know it's absolutely been replicated in my brain, so I'll have to contact those researchers, let them know we've, we've got the, the support they need for their theory. No, but but really, again, being being serious here, it's again, as leaders, as all of us as leaders, it's having that common language with the ATLs. It's having that common approach to handling challenging situations calmly, you know, and I'm curious what sort of um, protocols other schools are putting in place to sort of handle things during COVID because COVID has put us in a position where, and it's that next slide, the stress response system is really activated. So maybe you want to hit that chat right now and let us know what protocols are your schools putting in place to support those emotions, that stress system? How are they modeling for you? How are they passing on using those mirror neurons? Very good. So let's hear from our attendees. What are you doing these days? And uh, for all the people watching on Facebook, again, it's a time for you to interact with us and to tell us what you have done and how you are supporting and creating this healthy environment during during COVID. So uh, can you explain? OK, uh, I, I wanted to ask, what do you mean by SEL? And then it's social emotional learning, maybe? Yes, exactly. Uh, <laughs> sometimes when we are seeing a word for or uh, uh, like three letters like that, uh, we, we want to make connection. And then, OK, social emotional learning. <laughs> yeah, there's so many acronyms in, in yes. IB world and, and education. It's, uh, it's always, always fun. But yeah, social emotional learning is definitely something we're also embedding you know, we've uh, we've reached out. There's a number of great supportive websites. Um, we've shared with our staff one called Positivity Playground. It mm -hmm. uh, allows them to connect with mindful coaches, individuals who are there to support and listen. It, it, it stems from a positivity psychology background, you know, so it's just about, you know, not seeing the glass half full, not seeing it half empty, just being grateful to have a glass. And, and sometimes when you reframe your situation that way, um, it can help. And again, it's just building in the empathy, you know, as a, as a leadership team, as a member of the leadership team here, we're always reaching out to staff members and making sure they have the support. You know, when we first went online, uh, geez, uh, 10 months, 11 months ago, we immediately, uh, thanks to the experience of our amazing secondary and primary principles, you know, we put into place a 50% reduction of the timetable online. So there's, there's practices like that, that really allow teachers to um, you know have an outlet embrace share their feelings you know and and not run into this stress response system which is you know that fight flight or flee that they're they're not struggling but of course it's it's open communication because there is still situations there is still challenges and it's going to continue we you know i just read the news this morning and belgium is possibly going into a third wave third wave you know we're we're here to listen as a community and hopefully listen to what other communities are doing you know okay so Ibtihal, uh, she's mentioning having a well-being journal uh, mahira is talking about a wellness lead learners that supports the learning community and let me do this kind of a uh, before covered you know when you were going and listening to people talking about mindfulness introducing yoga or these kind of practices you felt that it's a kind of a fashion like now everyone is the trendy word, but, but yeah. we discovered with the COVID that no, it, it should be part of our curriculum. And then if I go back to the ATL, it's your self-management and it's part of the self-management, how I can control my emotion and then reflect on my emotion and deal with my emotion, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And we've been, you know, we've been fortunate enough 
the IBs led us there and allowed us to embed it into units of inquiry from a PYP Ooh. perspective. You know, we've got a grade two unit all all focused on well-being, where mindfulness is part of the regular practice each week. Um, and again, it's it's wonderful. We're, we're, we started to when we could actually meet in full faculty meetings. We were embedding that idea of you know having a minute of reflection at the beginning, building up the team, one another, sharing practices. You know those community collaborations are so important. Now it happens in a virtual platform. It's it's not quite the same, but we look forward to uh, that return. And like you were saying, Ali, you know people now get this is such a significant part of the curriculum. Daniela, uh, sorry, uh, Wayne. Daniela is mentioning yeah. that we're looking at the well-being and the safety of the teaching team and the students. So we're giving them also opportunities to share, to listen, to communicate their feeling. So it's not just about our; it's, it's about all the learning community. I know, like some schools, also they had their psychologist having a moment where she can uh, pick up the phone, call the parents, talk to the parents. And uh, Rachel is asking, so we have a first question here, maybe we can also discuss it. Uh, can you tell us more about how you are using the zones of regulation? Yeah, absolutely. Um, our primary years principal, Kay Gustafson, uh, brought it in with the support team. We have an amazing support team here and um, they have slowly in introduced it to all grade levels in the PYP. And it's just a common language uh, and the early years is a part of that as well, of course, here. And so it's, it's just a common language where the kids can identify, reflect. Um, it's used more in some classes as, you know, a check in at different points, but it just gives the kids a common language when they're not ready to use the big words. You know, Anna and I actually have a great conversation about this, you know, about it. It is important for them to do to learn those big words, but sometimes in the moment of frustration saying, I just feel in the red zone is much easier and it allows them to quickly communicate that. So again, you know, we're not yet done a book study that might be coming in the future, but we've got practitioners who are very uh, well versed. Uh, the grade one, two teacher this year is very well versed in zones. And so she's brought it into that well-being unit. Those are just some examples, regular reflections as well. Anna, do you want to add something about this question or we can continue? Yeah, I think uh, just supporting children and building this idea of self-awareness uh, from a very early age, being in tune with um, their, the signals in their bodies and how they're feeling is just very, very powerful. And if we're able, able to support children at a very young age, uh, I can just only imagine the difference we can, we can make in, in children's lives as they continue to develop. So extremely powerful things. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to, you know, for example, your, your circle time, Anna, uh, I was part of it just the other day. You just hearing you say that reminded me of, you know, the communication with the rock and holding the rock and sharing the feelings. It was just such a powerful experience for those kids. Yeah. And again, you know, it, there's nothing, nothing wrong in embedding that within a faculty meeting, you know, and that could be coming when we finally get faculty meetings back. But, um, you know, for those of you that are able to meet face to face, embedding that, that moment of mindfulness in, in those sessions is so important. Ready to continue. So over to you, Anna. Yeah, thank you, Wayne. Um, well, we talked about emotions earlier and how the way we respond to displays of emotions in others is very much dictated by our own experiences. Something else that is really important is this idea of understanding our own meta-emotional philosophy. So what, what is our meta-emotion philosophy? These are the beliefs that we hold about emotions and their expression, which are often the results of early experiences with our family, as well as with significant others throughout our lives and how these experiences can influence how we react and respond to emotions in others. So this is a really huge topic and we can spend an entire day talking about our experiences of how we felt at certain times our emotions were dismissed or disapproved of, right? And what this has done to us moving forward as adults. Um, perhaps we can have an entire session on this topic another time, but part of being attuned is really recognizing your own meta-emotion philosophy and reducing the impact of your meta-emotion philosophy on the members of your learning community during emotional moments. So this, again, this idea of self-awareness so how do you feel about emotions? How can this impact how you view and respond to emotions in others? 
what are some messages you may have had um, received from others about emotions? And how may this have impacted the way you respond to emotions in others? These are just some things to kind of get you thinking about. And actually in the Padlet, um, I added uh, an emotional awareness self-test, which can be fun for you to kind of do after the session. And it's designed to help you uh, take a look at your own emotional life. And because truly connecting to others in an authentic way requires one to feel what the other is feeling. And uh, to do this, one must be aware of emotions first in themselves um, and then in others. So that can be a fun thing for you to do after the session. I hope you enjoy that. Yeah. Yeah. And again, it's, you know, I think it's just about having those conversations, you know, with people when they're ready, uh, giving them the space to, you know, walk, walk away from that conversation when they need to and come back when they're ready in, within the community. Embedding it as part of, you know, faculty meetings or, you know, the ATL learning sessions or in putting it in within the, the PLC community, some of the strategies that we're using. Um, so we wanted to leave uh, plenty of time for just some reflections and some chats. And again, you know, we don't have to do it alone. We were never meant to. That was kind of the thing Anna and I talked about all along was that, you know, this is a, a sharing session where we're giving some sharing some resources, sharing some of the things that we do. But really, we're hoping to continue to grow this. Um, and that's why we started a Padlet uh, and just learn from others, you know, because we're, we're not we're not experts in this. We're uh, all learning about the ATLs, how to teach them, how to learn them, how to practice them in our own lives. And um, hopefully everybody's gotten a little something out of the session and uh, is able to to share or ask questions. And uh, and we can have a little chat now before we have to go. I don't know what time how we're doing for time, Ali. I, I have some people asking uh, on the pad, for the Padlet link on Facebook, so I'm trying to put it for them. And, oh, thanks. Uh, I think we can continue for the next 10 minutes, so we can open the Padlet if you want. I can, uh, I can open it using uh, my screen, Wayne, if you want to stop uh, sharing yours. And, yeah, sure, uh, that'd be, that'd be and great. Then we thanks, can, Ali. We, yeah, we can uh, take the participants through the resources that we have on Padlet, if you would like to uh, explain a little bit for them, what do we have here and uh, where they can find the test that Anna mentioned. So, uh, and then if there is some more question, feel free to send them in the Q&A. Okay, so I'm gonna start down here on the left. I just added it an hour ago. I, uh, this, this is the first webinar I've led. So I decided, you know, I need to do a little meditation before. I need to, need to get myself <laughs> centered, be, feeling well. And so I threw open my Calm app. This is a fabulous app that uh, I started using about three, four years ago and is offered free for all educators. Uh, I've used it in classroom with kids because they have short guided meditations, use it myself in my practice and just, you know, making sure I'm centered when I'm going into school in the day so that I can, you know, model that emotional strength, model that vulnerability, model all of those things that, you know, the team needs. Yeah, so that's a great resource. But where is the test, Anna? Oh, there it is, Emotional <laughs> Awareness Self-Test. Yeah. Okay, and then uh, this is also Lala Tat, so we can also highlight this again if you would like to talk also about the English meeting, Wayne. Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, it started in December, and we were chatting with just a small group of PYP educators and NYP DP. Um, because the platform Lala Tat has been developed by Lance King, Bianca Dusep, and a few of their partners. And essentially, it's an amazing resource for uh, older students to journal and engage with the ATLs and really explicitly learn these ATLs. Um, and so she's included, Bianca brought me and a number of the PYP educators in to talk about from a PYP perspective. So even yeah. though there isn't yet a, a platform from the Lala Tap perspective for PYP, it's coming, it's in the, in the works. Um, they, they've been working on it. And I've just been very uh, you know, fortunate to have connected at the right time and been able to, um, again, sort of build these chats that happen once a month and uh, share what I'm doing, moderate with others. The last one we had was all about perseverance. So we spent a, a full hour just really sort of going over resources that could help kids better understand perseverance, talk about explicit uh, instruction that we're gonna be using, what opportunities for kids to reflect on it. 
again, yeah, I, I, I just love it. The more I dig into the ATLs, the more I just see it as, again, the foundation for a healthy learning community, as, as we titled this. And let, let me say also on the platform, uh, non-IV school, they have also some resources for them. And then we call Absolutely. it for them 21st century skills. We, has, we had people asking, what is the PYP? So I just said that it's the primary years program. But again, what we are talking about, they are best practices that you can take also to your school, regardless of the curriculum, right, Wayne? Yeah. And so I, I might clarify then the ATLs are approaches to learning. And, mm -hmm. and while they are phrased that way, and the IB does share approaches to teaching, yeah, somebody's just saying ATL is a shortcut for what? It's, it's, okay, it's okay, Rahab, uh, it's approaches to learning. And so the IB defines these five uh, categories. You know, they've got communication, thinking, research, social, and self-management. And so Anna and I have been focusing a lot on the self-management, but again, it does touch on all of them because these are five interconnected interrelated sets of skills but as that those quotes i shared at the beginning they're the skills that we need to take control of our of our learning to have that sort of self-defined uh approach to learning self-assessing they're, they're just really um 21st century skills as ali has alluded to anna did you want to add anything no, I just um, just looking how amazing the Padlet looks, and <laughs> it's actually really cool that we started this um, just a week ago. Uh, the seb seminar, this webinar, but uh, actually really cool resources that I would like to check out too, <laughs> so yeah. we can keep adding to this. And so yeah. before uh, I share a few questions, I would like to remind all the people who are watching us and they are new uh, to our events, we still have two more sessions for today under this big day, uh, Learn and Lead the Leadership Day. Uh, so after the Approaches to Learning session, we have a session with Dina and the Teachers Are Leaders, the Three Steps to Success. You can come and join us. And then we will wrap up the day and we will finish the day with a panel discussion about teaching leadership skills for students. And here again, uh, I think we will have uh, interesting perspective from a school principal, from a school coordinator, and then from an entrepreneur. And James used to be one of my students in grade four. So, oh, that's so uh, exciting. Yes. <laughs> and he's now considered one of those best entrepreneurs below 30. Um, so uh, now we, we've been thinking about this uh, during COVID and then COVID was really shifting all our uh, ideas about learning and teaching, about health, about well-being. Uh, so what's next? And as you said, Wayne, we've been for like 12 months now with COVID, mm -hmm. first wave, second wave, and very soon leaders are going to prepare for the next academic year. Uh, so how many plans do we need to take into consideration and then how we can take this new experience to the new academic year? Yeah, again, I, I think one of the biggest takeaways is, is just the integration, the importance of integrating uh, those independence those self-management skills, again, leading well on the ATLs, including technology. You know, the, the use of digital learning is deeply embedded in the ATLs um, across all five areas. And again, sorry, I keep using that acronym. I've been an IB guy for a, 18 years now, so it's, it's, it's deeply ingrained. Um, but really, it, it, it's making sure that schools are prepared to jump online, offline, um, and preparing kids to to have the emotional strength, the emotional awareness to to cope with difficult situations. Um, what do you think, Anna? Um, yeah, connecting with each other digitally and as much exactly. as connecting to each other as human beings, and just practicing some compassion for others and um, for ourselves is really important. So yeah. not forgetting that we're human and um, to love one another yeah. will build our stamina and uh, our ability to, to handle Good. whatever comes ahead. Yeah, absolutely. And 
Any other final question from our attendees on Facebook or here on Zoom? Uh, Bianca, would you like to add something uh, from the perspective of the attendee today? Uh, or we are ready to say uh, thank you for Wayne and Anna. So yes, let's continue to help our students thrive in this world of big changes. Uh, Absolutely. You are, you are right, you are right. And then I have uh, Samira uh, mentioning that ATLs are the learner profile attributes in action um, and the IB mission statement. They are shared amongst all the program. So when all the school community members are, are aware of the vitality of these pillars of the programs, uh, then and only then the aspiration of creating a global lifelong learners can be achieved and a better world can be created so what a beautiful way to wrap up this yeah, session <laughs> absolutely thanks so much for sharing that really appreciate so everybody's Anna, participation Wayne, uh, thank you very much and uh, i think people are leaving with a lot of idea and a padlet full of resources i will meet everyone else if you are planning to continue with us in the next 30 minutes i will get a short break and then we continue all teachers are leaders three steps for success bye bye everyone bye now bye thank you enjoy some lunch ali i will you've been, you've been